Have you seen these videos telling you that sugar feeds cancer? If it's true, it is devastating. Does that mean no more chocolate or sugar in your coffee? I'm Dr. Liz, a breast cancer surgeon, and I don't remember being taught this in medical school. Now, I knew that a lot of sugar was bad for you, but causing cancer? That was new. Did I miss something? Or is this just another viral myth? So in this video, I'll unpack where the claim comes from, what the research really says, and tell you whether cutting sugar can actually starve cancer. But to start, we need to go back to a science lab in the 1920s, when a scientist called Otto Warburg noticed something strange going on. He was investigating how cancer cells get their energy. Now, normal cells get their energy by breaking down sugar into something called AT. And the easiest way for them to do this is with oxygen. Now you might hear this called oxidative phosphorylation or oxphos in some videos. And it happens in the mitochondria and they're like the powerhouses in the cell. One glucose molecule makes 36 molecules of ATP. And that's what your body is doing right now whilst you're watching me. But if oxygen is in short supply, like when you're sprinting at the end of a race, when your legs are aching and your lungs are burning, your cells have to adapt. This is called anaerobic glycolysis. And one glucose molecule only makes two molecules of ATP. So your cells need a lot more sugar to make the same amount of energy. Now they also make lactic acid as a waste product. And that's what makes everything hurt when you collapse in a heap at the finish line. Now Otto noticed his cancer cells were burning through sugar with anaerobic glycolysis even when oxygen was plentiful. And it just didn't make sense. Why use the less efficient route when the easier one's available? Now Otto called this the Wahlberg effect after him. And this is another term you might hear in viral videos. And lots of people use this to prove that sugar feeds and causes cancer because cancer cells love sugar, it must be causing the disease. Now, interestingly, the Warburg effect is actually the basis for a PET scan. Now, this is a special scan used to assess some cancer patients to see if their cancer has spread. In a PET scan, we inject a bit of glucose tagged with a radioactive marker. And because cancer cells use more sugar, they light up brighter, and that tells us where cancer might be hiding. But before I go any further, we need to talk about what sugar actually is, because not all sugars are the same. So if I asked you to describe sugar, you might say it's the sugar you put in your coffee or the icing on a donut or the honey on your porridge. And the thing is, they are all right. But, and this is crucial, we also find sugar in carrots and celery, milk and fruit juice, apples and pears, potatoes, rice and pasta, nuts and seeds. You might not know this, but every carb, healthy or not, breaks down into sugar. And the one time I did a YouTube short talking about this, I got hundreds, if not thousands of hateful comments, people saying I was making it up, but I'm not. Because sugar in its simplest form is one of three molecules. You've got glucose, fructose, and galactose. If you take, for example, table sugar that you put in your coffee or you use to bake with, this is sucrose and it's a combination of glucose and fructose. Lactose in milk is made up of glucose and galactose. Now, all these three molecules can be combined into smaller, medium, and larger molecules. And these form complex starches that we find in carbs like pasta and potatoes. And every carb, every complex starch and sugar is broken down by enzymes in your body to one of those three simple sugar molecules and they are the basic fuel source for every cell in your body. So technically, yes, sugar does feed cancer cells, but it also feeds your heart, your brain, your lungs, and every other bit of you. And the PET scan simply proves that cancer cells use more sugar than healthy cells. That's it. It cannot prove that sugar caused the cancer. And that's like saying people who smoke get lung cancer and people who smoke drink coffee. Therefore, coffee causes lung cancer, which we know isn't true, but that's how these associations can happen. If you like the video so far, subscribe to my newsletter for regular updates on the latest cancer news. But let's get back to the story. Why do cancer cells make their energy without oxygen in the hardest way possible? Surely they want to grow quickly. Why are they making it so hard? 
Now, after a bit of digging, I found the answer, and there are two reasons. The first is that cancer cells are constantly growing and dividing, so they need building blocks to make new cells. Those building blocks are called carbon molecules. Think of them like Lego bricks. So if they made energy in the normal way, using oxygen, they would quickly run out, like a child building a Lego tower and running out of bricks. But when they get the energy without oxygen, they can also make carbon molecules, which they need to grow. So it's actually really clever. By using more sugar, converting it without oxygen, they get the building blocks they need. But the other thing that happens is they also make lactic acid. Remember, we talked about that, that it makes your lungs burn at the end of a race. So lactic acid acts like a barrier to the healthy cells in your immune system that could potentially kill them. It's really, really clever. But does every cancer cell show the Warburg effect? Because lots of people would have you believe they do, but it's not true. So recent research has shown that only 70% of all cancer cells show the Warburg effect. The other 30% get the energy like normal cells. And these are cancers like prostate, pancreatic, some breast cancers, leukemias, and melanomas. So it can't be sugar driving the cancerous change. It's just a consequence of the mutations in the healthy cells when they become cancerous. So does that mean that sugar doesn't cause cancer? Well, actually, it doesn't. Sugar still causes cancer, but it's not because of the Warburg effect. Now, we already know that celery and carrots will feed cancer cells, just like donuts and cakes. But it's the donuts and cakes that can cause cancer, not your fruit and veg. So if videos are talking about sugar feeding cancer and they mean sugary processed foods like donuts and cakes, they're right. But they haven't clarified it. You see, the thing is, when you eat crisps and cakes and donuts and puddings and chocolate and you eat a lot of them, you are more likely to gain weight. They're empty calories. And we have concrete proof that obesity, the medical word for being overweight, for weighing more than you should, can trigger 13 cancers to form. It's not the only reason they form, and I'm not blaming anyone who is overweight for getting cancer. It just triggers a couple of the mutations that are needed to make a cell become cancerous. The thing is, when you carry too much fat, you develop chronic inflammation you get insulin resistance and hormonal imbalances. And it's those three things together that increase your risk of cancer. Now, if you want to find out what to eat to lower your cancer risk, check out my book, The Cancer Roadmap. So yes, a lot of cake is bad for you, but it's fine in moderation. 80-20 it has, but let's say you were really scared and you thought, right, I'm gonna cut out sugar completely. Would that stop cancers growing? You see, when you fast or you cut out all carbs on a really strict keto diet, your body has to improvise and it has stores of sugar called glycogen that it can turn to. That's what people use when they're doing long distance running events and they need to top up the sugar, but they have this glycogen that keeps them going. Now, when you run out of your glycogen stores, the body has to go to step B. It has to find other ways of making energy because your brain, your heart, your lungs, and your muscles need fuel to survive. But when they run out, your body has to find other means of making energy. And that's all your body, your heart, lungs, brain, and muscles, not just cancer cells. And your body does this by breaking down your fat stores and then your muscles. It's how people survive on hunger strikes and long religious fasts. And it's much harder to get energy this way, but it can be done. But cancer cells are sneaky and they don't mind what energy they use. They can also break down the tissues next to them to get more energy. So they continue to grow and divide while you lose your muscles to keep your heart, lungs and brains working. Now this is called cachexia and it can happen at the end of someone's life, whether they're dying from cancer or not. You don't have the energy to eat, you feel unwell. Your vital organs no longer have the energy they need to keep working. And I get really worried when people who have had surgery to remove their cancer go on extreme keto diets or cut sugar or go on crazy fasts. They may not have any cancer cells left and all they are doing is simply starving themselves for no good reason, because they've believed something they saw online. If sugar was dangerous, every doctor in the world would be telling us to avoid it. And that would be a shame. God, can you imagine a world without a cinnamon bun? 
But this is all just my opinion from the research I found. What do the experts say? Well, according to the American Cancer Society, the National Cancer Institute and CRUK, there is no direct evidence that sugar causes cancer. We know that too much sugary food in the diet indirectly increases your cancer risk by promoting obesity, but sugar itself is not a cancer-causing agent. So let's clarify, does sugar feed cancer cells? Yes, but it also feeds your brain, your lungs, your heart, your immune system, your life. The goal isn't to remove sugar from your body, it's to nourish your body better. Food isn't the enemy, but fear is. And in my own experience, God, the joy of tasting real chocolate again after chemo. It taught me that food can be a source of comfort in desperate times. We should enjoy our treats every once in a while and not feel guilty. And remember that a healthy lifestyle, regular exercise, proper nutrition, and maintaining a healthy weight, they are what truly matter for lowering your cancer risk and reducing the risk of cancer coming back. And if you want to know what actually causes breast cancer, watch this video next. I'm Dr. Liz O'Riordan. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel.